Hi everybody, welcome back to Making Stuff with Mrs. Barodi. I'm Mrs. Barodi, and today we're going to be talking about how to turn a shape into a form. And we're going to do that using line, but also how we shade those forms. So those of you that have had me before, this is a little bit of review. If this is totally brand new, what's coming up next are some slides where I show you step by step how we're going to do that. And then I show you some examples that I have. So let's get started. All right, my friends, here's our little slideshow of how we can see how we take a shape and turn it into a 3D form using line and also using shading according to a light source. On my front page here, you can see two different shapes and you can see they have light sides and they have dark sides. And that's what we're ultimately going to be looking for in your final practice page. On this slide, we have shapes on the left. We have a circle, a triangle, and a square. And on the right hand side, we have their corresponding forms. So a circle turns into a sphere, a triangle turns into a pyramid, and a square turns into a cube. And on our forms, you can see those dotted lines there. Those are like guidelines. Maybe those would be pencil lines we would eventually erase or lines we might make lighter depending on what material our forms are made out of. So if we look at the cube and it was going to be made out of glass, we might leave those lines nice and light because glass is see-through. Where on the pyramid, if we wanted to make it look like it was made out of stone, we would eventually erase those dotted lines because we can't see through stone. On this page, you can see I have my cube. It's still not solid. We can still see through it. And on the right, we have a light bulb. That represents our light source. It could be a light bulb, it could be a fire, it could be the sun, it could be a flashlight. And when we look at that light bulb, it's shining light towards the cube. So which part of that cube, the top, the front, or the left, which side is going to be the lightest? Which part is that light hitting and which part isn't getting any light? You can see, once we fill it in solidly, that left-hand side is the darkest. It's the furthest thing away from the light. The light can't really touch it. That's why it's so much darker than the top and the front. So if we look at a whole pile of cubes, where's the light source in this? My hint is to look at where the shadows are on the blocks. If I look at that blue one on the top, the top part is light. That front part is dark. The orange and red one underneath it, same thing. So my guess is that light source is up towards the top and maybe towards the back of that pile because the front of the pile is in shadow. On this close-up of a tennis ball, you can see there's that bright highlight right on top and there's a shadow underneath that ball. So my guess for this is the light source isn't on the left or the right. I think it's right above that tennis ball. And on spheres, it's tricky because they're round and they don't have kind of sharp corners, we need to be a little bit more careful on how we shade it. You can see it's nice and light on top, but then it's kind of a dark band in the middle and then gets light and dark again. And we'll talk more about that when you look at my examples. On this one, we have cones, which is another shape we can get from the triangle shape. We can turn that into a, a cone instead of a pyramid. And on this, the light source isn't very bright. So I'm going to look at the shadows underneath the cones to try and figure out where that light source is coming from. And my guess is that it's from the left and almost kind of in the front. You can see the shadow of that cone all the way on the right kind of overlapping onto the cone in the back. So when you do your practice ones and maybe a final project, you could use one point perspective to create your forms. That's one of my tips. It works best with squares, rectangles, and triangles, and make sure you're not drawing things too small, otherwise it's going to be hard to shade them. And you need to decide where your light source is before you begin drawing and shading. If you looked at that pile of cubes, if we were going to draw that, we'd have to figure out where that light source is because shadows are going to be important. Light pencil lines, always, always important. Remember to use that gentle pressure, and it's okay to erase and change your lines. On my examples, you're going to see I erased a lot before I was satisfied with my lines. And when you're using color to shade things, complementary colors will be important for that. And we're going to talk more about that again when I show you the examples. All right? So if you think you got it, we're going to move on and look at my examples. If you think you need to go back through this, go for it, and then join us back for the Okay, everyone. So these are some of the examples I made of some forms using quite a few different materials. And you can see on here I have a sphere, I have a cylinder, I have a cone, I have a pyramid and I have a cube. So I try to make a variety of different forms for you and I use several different materials like I said. And on each of these, I took my pen and I made a light source 
next to each of these forms before I started adding, adding the color. So on this sphere over here, you can see I used pen and ink crosshatch, and that just means I used my pen and made lines that crisscrossed each other with a shadow. On the cylinder, I used warm colors, yellow, orange, and red. And I also used a little bit of purple in there for the shadow, and we'll talk more about that in a second. When you look up here on my cube, I used pencil, and then I used a blending tool to smooth it out and make it look not rough and to blend my pencil lines together. And again, I made a shadow according to the light source. For this one, it's a little time consuming, that's why the shape is so small. This one is a pen and ink stipple. That just means I take my pen and I make lots and lots of dots all over the pyramid. And then over here on the cone, I used cool colors and all I used was chalk. Chalk you'd use on the sidewalk or on your chalkboard. And I used my cool colors, I used my green and my blues, and then my purples for the shadows. So on the page underneath this, I'm gonna show you how to draw a couple of these shapes, and then I'll talk to a little bit more about some of the supplies you can use and how you can use it to shade them, okay? So looking at my paper here, I have my 2H pencil. It's gonna be nice and hard because it's got an H on it, and that's how I know it's gonna make a light line. The harder my lead is, the lighter my line is going to be. And I have my handy dandy eraser that I always have with me. So on this paper, I'm gonna turn it because that's how I'm, I'm comfy drawing my shapes. So if I wanted to start with a sphere, I'm gonna do very light lines, and you can see I have lots of lines before I'm sort of satisfied with my, my circle shape. Okay? Now, if we were gonna use my pencil to shade this in, again, I'm gonna say my light source is from over here. So that means this part of my sphere is gonna be light, this part is dark. But because spheres are round, the light hits it a little differently than something that has flat edges. So on this, before I start, I always like to make my pencil and do a nice light line there. And I don't know if you can see it from that far away. A nice line where that highlight's gonna be. And then when I add my shades, it could be pen and ink, could be chalk, could be marker, could be anything. My lines are gonna follow the shape of the circle. I'm not just gonna scribble straight lines on there because that's not gonna help with the form and the roundness of my sphere. So I'm gonna take my pencil and I can make lines that go on my sphere that are nice and curved like this. And already it should start looking like more of a sphere and less of a flat circle. Now if I'm going to use pencils, I can keep using this. I can press harder and it'll make a slightly darker line. But if you ever got one of these fancy kits from say a grandma or grandpa or somebody, I think this one probably came from my mom, this has all sorts of pencils in it with different um, densities of the graphite inside. So B is nice and soft. You can see if you compare the tips of these pencils, my 2H pencil it's nice and sharp and pointy and small, where my 7B pencil is a little bit bigger and it's a little bit more dense because this is a soft graphite. This one's hard, this one's soft. So this one is gonna make a much darker line than my 2H pencil. So for this one, barely pressing down any harder, see how much darker that line is already? Crazy, right? So I'm gonna keep taking my pencil and I'm gonna keep making those nice curvy lines. And like our example back in the slides, when we look at this sphere that I actually finished shading with my pen and ink crosshatch, we have a dark part here, we have our highlight, but then we also have that lighter part, darker part. So the sphere, not necessarily what I'd wanna start with. I would start with maybe something that's more um, cube-like or pyramid-like because you're gonna have those straight edges and you'll be more successful at it. This one's a little bit trickier to do, but if you wanna start out with it, go for it. What I would start out with is a cube. So I'm gonna go back to my 2H pencil, nice and hard. And when I talked about using a vanishing point for making your shapes, this is what I meant. So I have my vanishing point and I first make my square. And even with my square, I'm not just making one straight line with it. I'm just lightly sketching until I think I have the right shape and I think I have the right shape. Now, I'm awesome. I've done this a lot. I can eyeball 
this line to the vanishing point pretty easily. But for you, you might want to stick with your ruler until you're comfy. And then I'm going to use this corner back to the vanishing point, and I'm going to use this corner back to the vanishing point. Very steep angle there. And part of your brain's going to be saying, that's not right, Mrs. Brody, that doesn't look right. But it will once we erase some of the lines. I don't think this one's quite straight enough for me. There we go. Okay, so now to make our cube, I'm going to make a nice horizontal line that matches up with that line. Now I have to make a vertical line that matches up with this one. And this is why light lines are important because now I can erase all of that stuff from back there. My dining room table's making noises at me. And then I can take my pencil and make my lines just a little bit more solid to help with that. So that's one way I could make a cube shape. The other way I know I've shown a lot of my current students and former students is you can make a square. Boop. Then you can make another square that overlaps it. Remember those dotted lines from our slides? Okay. Connect to the corners. Now I have a cube. This one looks a little bit more drastic. It looks like it's really going back there into the background. This one looks a little, little less dramatic, and that's okay. So again, I could come back with my eraser and erase some lines. If I wanted this to be a solid top, I would color the whole thing in probably one color or one shade. But if I wanted this to look like it was an open box on top, these are the lines I would erase on the sides, and now I can shade this in. For this, I'm actually gonna stick to a color over here. So I have my color pencils off to the side. I'm gonna pick pink, because why not, right? And I'm gonna say my light source is coming from over here. That means it's above the box and on the right. That means this side's gonna be the darkest. This one's gonna be a little bit dark, get a little bit lighter. And then the inside of the box, this is where things get tricky. This side isn't getting any sun. It's not above it, like the, our tennis ball, it's off to the side. So this part of my box on the inside would be quite dark because it doesn't have a lot of light coming into it. On the rest of this, this is going to be a little darker, but it's going to get lighter as it goes up to here because that's where the light is hitting. And I talk about this a lot with my current students. Turn your paper. It's not glued down. I like coloring right to left. That makes my heart happy. So I turn my paper so it's easier to do. Already looking a little bit like a box, right? Nice and light up towards the top, a little bit darker as it goes inside that box. Now this edge over here is going to be nice and dark too because the sun isn't hitting it. So again, turning my paper so I'm comfy. And you can see I'm coloring in one direction. I'm following the shape of the box. I'm not doing this random scribblies mess. Scribble monsters make me sad. Okay, nice and dark. Still getting the feel that this is a three-dimensional box, right? For this one, I like to color the whole thing nice and lightly. I know it looks a little scribbly, but bear with me. Okay, now over here, I'm gonna make this a little bit darker because it's a little further away from that light source than the right-hand edge. I like to make these edges nice and crisp. Helps with that defining edge of the shape. So I'm gonna color it a little bit darker over here. And as we go this way, I'm gonna put less pressure on my pencil so it gets lighter and lighter towards that edge. I might even add a little bit of shadow down here. Okay, now look, we have a cube, fantastico. When we talk about the shadows, remember I said something about complementary colors? On these, for my shadows, I added a dark purple to my sort of reddish orange. Still kind of in that family. You know, it's got some red in it because it's, it's purple, but that helps that shadow look a little bit more realistic. If I had just used red, it might not have made as much sense. So if I'm using pink for this, pink has got red in it because it's a tint of red, red and white. So for the shadow, I might pick a nice dark green color because it's complementary, they look nice next to each other, but when they mix together, that green is gonna make the pink a little bit darker. 
So for our shadow, we have to think our light source is from the top and the right. So that means our shadow is going to be off in this area. It's not going to be a circle because that's not a circle. It's not going to be a triangle. That's not a triangle. We want it to be sort of that cube shape. Now, does that make sense? With our light source coming from here and hitting this way, I don't think it's quite right. I think it needs to be a little bit more like that. And if I was smart, I would have done it with my pencil first instead of doing it with the color. Bad Mrs. Brody. So I start off lightly, just in case I make a mistake, and then I take my pencil and I come back through and make it nice and dark. And because it's a shadow, I'm not going to worry about making it any kind of variation in color. I'm just going to make it nice and solid. And now I'm going to take that green pencil and again, making that edge kind of nice and crispy and coming through with my green. Now right now you're thinking, ooh, that doesn't look very good, Mrs. B. That green's kind of standing out, it's not blending with the pink. That's why I can dig into my bucket of stuff and inside here I have my blending tool. Now if you don't have a fancy schmancy blending tool, you can see I use that for my pencil. You can use a tissue, you could use a Q-tip, anything that's nice and kind of soft. You could even use um, some tissue paper if that's all you had. So I'm going to use this end because this end was for pencil and this one I will keep for my colored pencils. And I'm going to take that and use it to blend the color just a little bit. That's going to help that green blend into the pink just a little bit. See how it's starting to show up on there? And that side's nice and clean, so maybe I'll use the nice clean side to kind of blend in my pink. Already looking a little bit better than just the solid pink, right? It helps color, cover up some of those white spots I left behind. So while you're practicing at your house, on here, I could probably fit maybe one or two more shapes and keep practicing. I could even use the back of the paper if I didn't use marker. Look how nice and clean that is. On this guy, because I used some markers and things, maybe not so much on the back of that guy. And on this, I fit, you know, five shapes on there and turned them into forms. When we talk about cross hatching and coloring with our colors or even just with pencil. The key thing is to make sure you know where your light source is, but also you're following the shape of that form that you're going to make. So for this one, I went up and down, but I could have made my lines go around like this. That would help that out. I could even come back with a pen. This is just a, a really super skinny Sharpie marker. I could even come back with this on top of my color and help make it look like that cylinder shape by adding in some maybe dark lines. Okay, we don't want cartoony. Eventually you could make cartoons like this, right? But for this, we're just trying to get an idea of how to turn that into a form from a shape. For the stippling, this is just tedious, my friends. If you wanna try it out, man, gold star for you. You just, add dots. You want to start far apart because you can always add more. You can't take them away. Okay, so your challenge is to do some of these shapes. Turn them into forms. It's okay if you make mistakes. Okay, so maybe green, maybe not the best choice. Maybe I would do this again and use dark purple or dark blue. That might work better. Who knows? I want you to just do your best on this and to practice turning shapes into forms. And again, if you need to go back to the slides and get some more information before you head out, go for it. And as always, I want you to remember to please be kind, not only to other people, but to yourself. It's kind of a, a tough time right now, okay? So cut yourself some slack. And also to make sure you're being safe, wash your hands, and to definitely be creative. I can't wait to see some of the stuff you guys send me. And those of you that are my current students, uh, don't forget about my office hours. They're gonna be next Wednesday as well. So show up, show me some of your awesome work. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.